Good morning, One Family Church. It is so great uh, to be able to live stream our service this morning. Uh, normally, I say we are one church in two locations. Today, I want to say we are one church in hundreds of locations uh, around the country, uh, and we're just grateful that uh, you could join us, and we're grateful to be able uh, to provide a, a worship service for you this morning. Um, I want to start, before we dive in, we're going to have a fun roundtable discussion with some awesome people this morning. But before we do that, uh, I want to I start by saying a few words of thanks. First, I want to say thank you to God for protecting us, for keeping, uh, uh, keeping our minds right, for helping lead us through this situation uh, with the coronavirus uh, pandemic that's happening around the world. I just, I'm grateful that we have a God that looks after us uh, and leads us and guides us by the power of his Holy Spirit. Uh, I also want to say thank you to our team. Um, not, not, not just our staff, but definitely our staff. Our staff has pivoted beautifully, amazingly, in the last 48 hours uh, to, to be able to provide uh, a live stream service like this for you. And I'm deeply grateful for our team. Uh, I'm grateful for the outpouring of love that we've received from, our, uh, from all of our uh, uh, congregation. Um, when I put the word out this week and said, hey, if there are any seniors that uh, are in need, um, we have received literally dozens, and, I'm, and we're, my phone is getting blown up on a moment-by-moment -moment basis of people saying, we're here to serve if people need groceries run, if, if you need anything. So if you're a senior at home watching right now and you need something, uh, let us know. You can just email us, info at onefamilychurch.com. Uh, our students who have been displaced, um, we, we have had numerous people say, hey, we'll take care of the students, whatever they need. So if you are a, a student from one of the universities that got closed down and you need uh, whatever you need, we've got people standing by to help you. Uh, info at onefamilychurch.com. Uh, so I just want to say thank you. Um, I want to say thank you to these panelists who have come in today um, and, and have agreed to, to help us walk through what we're going to call today uh, a topic leading through adversity, leading through adversity. So begin, before we begin, I want to introduce uh, each one of our roundtable uh, panelists today. Uh, first of all, Tamara Duperval Brownlee. Uh, Tamara is an amazing woman of God. She is a member of our ministry council. Uh, Tamara leads uh, Ascension Health. She's with Ascension Health. I'm going to get it exactly right, Tamara. Uh, Vice, uh, Senior Vice President, Chief Community Impact Officer at Ascension Health. Uh, basically, what they do is develop and implement strategies to integrate health care uh, in communities. And, um, and Tamara oversees all of that. Uh, she has uh, uh, her BS degree, her Bachelor of Science degree um, in chemical engineering. Uh, she got a Master's of Public Health um, from a little college on the East Coast called Harvard University. You may have heard of that. Um, specializing in public, uh, uh, in healthcare policy. Um, she has a Master of Business Administration from the University of Tennessee, uh, focusing on a physician executive. And then she has a, a, a medical degree from University of, uh, of Illinois College of Medicine. So guess who I've been texting all week to figure out um, <laughs> what we should do, uh, along with other medical professionals in our organization. Yeah, Tam Tamara's gotten a text or two from me, and I'm so <laughs> thankful that you're here. <laughs> um, Will Chu uh, is another leader in our congregation. Uh, Will and his wife Esther um, lead uh, uh, with InterVarsity Christian Fellowship. Uh, he's the Missouri area ministry director. He oversees campus fellowship groups and staff across the state. So he's on the front lines uh, working with students right now and helping um, uh, through crisis and helping them through a lot of upheaval and disruption that they're experiencing right now. And so uh, we're just really grateful for you. Will to have you here. And then we've got Tim Schomburg. Uh, Tim is a business leader. I, you're you're going to see a theme because we have leaders in medicine, in vocational campus ministry, and in business. Uh, Tim Schomburg has been uh, a, a business leader for 20 years. Uh, he's been at executive level for over 12 years. And Tim, what Tim loves to do is lead teams, build teams, and lead teams. Uh, so often he and uh, his teams will face adversity. They'll face difficulty and crisis. And uh, Tim has committed 
himself to being able to lead through those experiences as well. Uh, and he has four kids, so he's also leading some people uh, just at home. Um, so we're just grateful for you guys um, and, and grateful that you can join us. Um, I'm going to just sort of tee up our conversation today, and then I really want to spend time hearing from you guys um, and for, for our church family. Um, the, the, the topic, the general topic, is leading through adversity. Um, there are a few different areas in, in, that we all experience for our own life in terms of leadership. Number one is self-leadership. How do we lead ourselves through hard times? Uh, how do we follow Christ uh, and lead ourselves through adversity? Number two is what about the people that are near us, our family, our friends, uh, on our job, our, you know, that, those immediate spheres of influence? And then the third level is a bigger picture sort of community leadership. Um, I want to focus especially on one subject today that I talked to our staff about, and, and this has just become a theme for us in the last 72 hours, and that is that for believers, adversity always represents opportunity. For believers, adversity always represents opportunity. I'm going to give one quick uh, scripture on this, and then I'm going to open it up because I, I don't need to preach if I've got this brain power up here. Um, James 1 uh, verses 2 through 4 says, Consider it pure joy, pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. Count it all joy. The scripture, when it says joy, that, that phrase, it actually means lean into adversity. Count it all joy, my brothers and sisters, when you face trials of many kinds, because trials can actually produce uh, opportunity. Adversity, it always reps, represents um, uh, opportunity. Adversity always rep, represents opportunity for the believer. So I want to talk to you guys a little bit this morning um, about instances in your personal life and in your professional life where you faced adversity uh, and where in retrospect, in hindsight, because sometimes it's hard to see it in real time, but in retrospect, um, that adversity actually led to opportunity. Let's start with you, Tamara. Uh, thanks, Pastor Brennan. Good morning, everyone. Um, as I was thinking about this question, uh, there are so many examples that came to mind, but um, I'll, I'll zero in on one personal and one professional. Personally, uh, it started early, and I'm sure this is resonant for many of you that grow up in single family homes. You know, it's like when you have two parents and then there's one parent. And then what happens? You know, when resources get challenged and, and the like, and I was old, the oldest of two, and um, extremely shy as a kid. I'm still pretty shy now, introvert, acting extrovert. And, um, and I, saw, I see now that that moment where my mom needed me to step up, be the big sister, take care of your sister. We were latchkey kids, so you know what that is. Um, and, uh, and really stepping up, having a sense of responsibility and accountability to be safe, to cook, to make sure that you know, everybody got their homework done and not worry because you know, ultimately we were going to have it under control. So I'm grateful for that. Um, professionally, I'm in the midst of one really uh, impactful right now with what's happening in, regarding to the coronavirus situation across the nation. Um, as Brett uh, mentioned, I have a really wonderful opportunity within Ascension, but part of my role actually leads a team in Washington, D.C. This week, um, I've been traveling every week uh, since this year started, except this past week because I needed to be here for some meetings. And leading from afar has been really interesting, um, knowing that my staff are, um, you know, have questions. You know, there have been... Um, concerns about even associates being exposed and what does that mean for everyone else and I saw my job really to provide calm you know um, I, I resonated your words from last uh, week's sermon wisdom without worry you know and we'll do protection without panic um, and to be a steady voice and even letting them know even if I wasn't there next to you I am with you you have access to me 24 7 and we're going to be all right because we're doing the right thing um, and uh, and I'm grateful I think for that it's still not resolved, as you know. Uh, we still have things to do. I mean, I'm emailing as recently as this morning um, to the team, and I'm praying about whether I'm going to be there next week um, because my team needs me. You know, they're fatigued. They're tired. So pray with me about that. Um, but I, I'm, I'm overwhelmed by peace, and I pray that for everybody, that you are overwhelmed by peace because God is still with us, and he's in control. Amen. Amen. All right, let's just close with that. Should we... <laughs> 
Um, <laughs> mic drop. Mic drop. <laughs> Will, how about you? Are there, are there instances either as vocational minister on campuses or in your personal life where you went through something hard, difficult, and a trial that turned out to be an opportunity for you? Yeah, I think um, so. Even just growing up, uh, I have a father who has PTSD mm -hmm. and schizophrenia. Mm -hmm. And so I remember just not sure what to do every single day. It's like you never know what your dad's going to say or do. And so living in that constant state of uncertainty mm -hmm. and somewhat fear, it, it just kind of drove me, uh, number one, to God. I think that was the only thing that I could do in the midst of just uncertainty was just to pray and ask the Lord for help every day to, to, for my father to get better, for me to feel less afraid. And I think in retrospect, looking back on it, it was an opportunity for me to deepen my faith and um, just to have this sense of peace that God is with me, um, that he's with my family, despite what I can or cannot see that the Lord is watching over me. And so that's been really, really powerful. And now my prayer life, I've seen how I've grown in that and how I can ask the Lord and come to him and call him my heavenly father. And also, I've had a lot more surrogate fathers, uncles, big brothers because of that. And some of you are out there today. So I just want to say thank you. And this church has been a family to me in that way as well. And so I'm just really grateful for that. In the midst of now, just kind of everything that's happening with all the school closures, I mean, it happened really quick within the course of like 24 hours from Wednesday to Thursday. Communication went out, schools were canceled, and students were scrambling to kind of get housing and food and all these different uh, items. And so I think in the midst of that, I did feel a little bit panicked myself. I'm like, oh, what do I do? I don't have you know, the Ritz-Carlton to kind of call up and have housing for all of them. But I knew that I had a family in terms of the, uh, the family of God. And I reached out to you and to other folks. And it's just been really powerful to see that it's, it's interesting that we can actually just lean our own wisdom, but how can we lean on other people, the family of God, to work together? So that's been really cool to see that we can, through adversity, we can be one family, literally, and work together to, for, the, for God's glory and for other people. So. Amen. You know, it, my, my pastor, Bishop Claude Alexander at Park Church in Charlotte, North Carolina, talked to him this week. You know, everybody needs a pastor. Uh, and, and, and my pastor said, in effect, what you just said, Will. He said, um, I, I, I wonder if uh, social distancing actually gives us an opportunity individually and collectively to draw closer to God. So while we're taking a step back from being together, uh, it may even provide an opportunity for our faith to grow and for our relationship with God to grow and for our intimacy to grow. Um, it's a wonderful example of how adversity actually, actually drove you closer into the arms of God. Amazing. Yeah. Tim, how about you? What, sure. what instances have you experienced? There's been many uh, throughout the years. Um, I, I can, versus drilling down on one specific issue, I think one of the things that you need to do is really step back and, and take a look and analyze the situation and develop a plan um, or really sometimes it's just a matter of finding a way, making a way or getting out of the way. Mm. And sometimes you gotta get out of the way to let God do his thing. Sometimes you may need to get out of the way to let someone else do their thing that they're better at than you, that's not your skill set. So for example, letting the medical field in this situation do their thing and supporting our community with how we can support. So um, we can support our community by being engaged with people. You know, we talked about stepping back and not be and socially isolating that's only physically mm -hmm. you know today we have technology we have so much to still engage so to reach out to people to stay engaged with people that may have to to isolate themselves that some of the elderly that are out there and really engaging but i think rallying people together to each do their part and yeah. finding a way make a way or get out of the way yeah. and uh, in this situation i think we all play a role yeah. but no matter what the situation is um I, I can speak to a few. Uh, you know, we had back in the day, if anyone remembers the Joplin tornado mm -hmm. that came mm -hmm. through, yeah. um, and it, it took out basically a, a, a one mile wide strip through the heart of Joplin, mm -hmm. and it took out our only, this was back when I was in my rental car days, it took out our only rental car facility, wiped it, it was gone. Mm -hmm. All of the cars. And what you may not think about in a situation like that is one of the first things you need to kind of put your life back together is transportation. Mm -hmm. And so what were we gonna do? It happened to align with Edie's birth, so I wasn't able to be there, so leading from afar. And uh, we figured it out, find a way. So we, we negotiated with a vacant dealership, we trucked tr uh, cars in from all over the country, 
We brought employees that stepped up and wanted to help from other areas. And we were able to provide the transportation. But what we found is we were also to provide some mental support for all these folks that came in. And long story short, that, that, that fixed itself really quickly. People got their cars. They moved. They did whatever they needed to do. But that was a tough situation where it looked like there was no real answer. Um, but there was when everyone came together and worked together. It's almost like the adversity, the obstacle, actually connected people in ways that they might not have been connected before. 100%. And required people to, to actually lean in and be better at loving one another and caring for one another. Mm -hmm. um, that's what adversity can do. I'm, I, I know we just finished this series uh, on David, and I don't want to rehash that series, but there's a, there's a line in that series that keeps resonating with me. Uh, when David comes to tell, to tell Saul that he wants to fight uh, Goliath, um, and what's so fascinating to me is that he names a series of problems that he faced in the past in order to demonstrate his capacity to take on this new challenge. So he literally comes to, to Saul and goes, hey, guess what? I actually faced a lion before. <laughs> and, and, and I know that when David, you know, between the ages of 12 and 15, when a lion came into the field, um, that was a problem. That was adversity. Uh, and that adversity gave him an opportunity to two things, grow in his faith, right? I'm going to trust in God. And two, grow in his skill set. Uh, get, get good at throwing, at throwing rocks at lions, slinging rocks at, ro at lions. Um, and, and, he, and he defeated that problem, which gave him an opportunity when the bear came that, that he had already experienced adversity from the lion he had already and his faith had grown his skill set had grown so that when he faced the bear uh he was able to tackle the bear but he would not have been able to do so had he not faced the lion when he gets to goliath now he's faced a lion and a bear uh and so he has he has faced these problems in the past which were in retrospect opportunities um and and again the line that he tells saul uh is amazing because he says uh, the Lord who rescued me from the paw of the lion and from the paw of the bear will rescue me from the hand of this Philistine. Mm. And so it's this du dual, dual thing happening. It's my faith, the Lord will rescue me, and I've gotten really good at hitting targets with my sling. Now, he doesn't rely fully on himself. Uh, he puts his trust in God because he knows that himself, he can't do it on his own, which is another reason he gets five rocks. He says, I, I, I'm going to, you know, if I miss, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure I can get it in five. Now, I'm quite confident I can get it in, in three and, and maybe I can get it in one. Um, but it provided, those problems provided opportunities for him to grow. Absolutely. Um, yeah. I was just going to say, I, I love this passage of scripture too, and as I was thinking about the, the past few weeks, um, I thought about how every now and again we just need to have a flashback, you know, of what God did for you, you know, um, for David, you know, I got the lion, I got the bear, surely I can get Goliath because God is with me. We've been through H1N1, we've been through SARS, we've been through the flu, you know, God got us through that, we're going to get through COVID, amen? Um, so that is what provides our peace. It has nothing to do with the fact that medical technology is what it is today. It's just God is in control. Yeah. yeah. Amen. Hey, man, there aren't a lot of people in this auditorium, but we are shouting right now <laughs> in this auditorium. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> um, so that actually leads us into the, into the question, how has, how has faith played a role in faith in Christ? How has that played a role in, in helping you navigate through adversity? Uh, anybody who wants to run with that. Where, where has faith been central for you, Tim? Yeah, so for me, you know, when you're looking at business, you know, you'll have a, a corporate vision and you make decisions based off of your values and, and, and your mission statements. A good company does anyway, that's why they're there. Uh, if you're managing a brand, you know, you have a brand strategy and all these decisions come off of that brand strategy. You know, when you look at your faith, like we, we know God's strategy. He mm. gave it to us. Yeah. Um, it's pretty simple, love God and love others. Um, and so when you go through tough times, you kind of know the story already. You know where it's going. And I find comfort in that. So to me, um, I'm just going to do what I can do, control what I can control, lean on others, and trust God that there is a plan. He's already communicated it to us. And uh, that doesn't mean it's easy, but we know the story. 
And I, I find comfort in that when mm -hmm. in the middle of, and you know, you're leading people, not everyone's gonna have uh, your worldviews, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. um, in fact, most do not. Mm -hmm. And so, but everyone wants to know a, that there's a plan right. and that it's a, as simple of a plan as possible so it's repeatable. Yeah. And I think that's where as a leader, what you're doing and you're doing and communicating to your teams yeah. on a regular basis, yeah. not like mm -hmm. every now and then, but continually communicating what you're doing with the notes you're putting out, that's key. Yeah. Um, because sometimes while we may know the story, others don't, and you had to communicate it to them and be very clear. It's almost like, you know, when the scripture teaches us to encourage one another in the Lord, it's basically reminding each other mm -hmm. like we're doing right now, like you just mm -hmm. did. God has a plan. Mm -hmm. There's an outcome that is determined by God. Uh, God knows where this is going. And actually just having that comfort, that knowledge mm -hmm. says, it gives you the opportunity to go, hey, I can't actually see where we're going sometimes. I don't know how things are going to turn out. I don't know if we're going to be live uh, live streaming for the next week or for the next month or for the next six months. I, I, I don't know. We don't know. But we trust God no matter what. Uh, and some of you today who are facing, you know, hardships with your job and with your family, if we can convey anything, I think what we're trying to convey to you today is, hey, trust God in this. He's got you in this. Um, Will, how about you? How has faith n helped you navigate through these yeah. experiences? I remember when we did the 25 days of prayer. And we read Proverbs every single day at 6.30 a.m. It was really great, by the way. Um, I, and I was like, I don't really know how these words are going to come up again in my life. But during this week, I just heard a lot about just remembering. Listen to my words. Don't lose sight of them. Let God's word penetrate your heart. And I just thinking like, wow, God's words are really a fortress around all the fear, all the anxieties that I have. And also with so many different articles that bring up different points of view, yeah. it's causing a lot of like confusion. Mm -hmm. I think just sticking to God's word, God's truth has really helped give me peace and a freedom to say like, I don't know all about this. I don't know what's going on, but I can trust in God's plan. I can trust that the Lord is leading and guiding me. So that's been really powerful for me. And uh, it's helped to not be on Facebook as much and CNN, you know, all those different articles. Unless you're live streaming the service Unless right streaming. now. <laughs> Stay and on, please. And you're doing a watch party with your friends. <laughs> exactly. So that's been good to kind of take a break from that, spend some more time in the Word, be revived in the Word as well. It's been really, it's been really good for me. You know, that... That, that reminds me that in these times of uncertainty, in these times of adversity, uh, one of the temptations that I have uh, is to become anxious, uh, to become worried. Um, another temptation that I have is to become distracted. Uh, when things are really clear and you're just trucking right down the path and everything is going great, uh, man, it's, it's, you know, it, it's easy just to stay focused. But when, you know, the outcome is muddled and it's not entirely clear, um, those, those are also opportunities, if we're not careful, to allow ourselves to get sidelined. Uh, we saw this with the children of Israel when they were wandering in the wilderness. Every time they faced adversity, they got distracted. They got distracted by other desires and, and they got distracted by fear. They got distracted by anxiety and they ended up wandering around for a long time. And I think God is calling us in this time uh, to avoid those temptations of distraction, anxiety. Uh, what are some other temptations or maybe similar ones that, that you face uh, when you are facing adversity? What, what, if, if you're not grounded in faith, uh, where do you tend to go? Yeah. Um, we, we call those failure mode behaviors, you know, um, and a lot of people will tend to go super negative. You know, um, I, I, I tend to be on the other side of it where I'm just like, it'll be all right, when there's <laughs> threats all over me, and I'm just like, hey, it'll be all right. Uh, that's why I have my husband who's the risk manager, you know, to say, no, we really need to pay attention to this. But, um, but I do think that the failure mode behavior that's very common is that is getting into this negative space, you know, where it's like, it's never going to get better and the like. And I'm so grateful. I'm going to pull the thread that, um, that Will started on about the tools that we have, I think, in our faith, you know, that um, anxiety or the worry is going to come up. We don't have to rest in it, though. Mm -hmm. And I think understanding who you are and whose you are and what tools you have and why 
why you're here, um, really helps. For me, it, it's scripture, it's prayer, and being a part of the community here. You know, so when I'm just like, oh, you know, it's not that bad, but stuff is happening, I throw that word on, and um, you know, I was up this morning at three something for no good <laughs> reason, um, and uh, I just put my earbuds in, you know, turned on the Bible scripture, and started listening to the word, and I was at peace, you know, and uh, and went to sleep. So I'm, I'm thankful for that. But I, I think that's that's definitely the polar extremes of going super negative or super oblivious to what's going on, and we need to operate in wisdom. That's good. Will or Tim, do you guys have any any examples where, like, if you're not grounded in your faith, I, I love I love that yeah. because I can actually get Pollyanna too if I'm not careful. I can be like, you know, and that's almost like denial. It's almost like, hey, it's gonna be fine. Don't worry about it, right? Yeah. But that's also a temptation, and it's not it's not grounded in in wisdom. Yeah, I think. <laughs> Fear and being anxious, everyone deals with that. Yeah. It's normal. Yeah. Um, it's instilled in us for a reason, yeah. fear. There's things we should be fearful of. Um, and my wife and I were talking about this on Friday night. You know, the phrase, "There's only the only thing to fear is fear itself. And it, that's not real, really the true. Um, it's fun to say that. Um, but there's a, there's a moment to be cautious where there is something, like wash your hands, yeah. right? Um, <clears throat> don't take too big of a risk in business, right? Analyze things first. It's not that you, you should have no fear, but I see people either a getting really negative or uh, that negativity turning into panic or the negativity turning into being really reclusive and totally disinterested. Um, and so I think par part of what you can do as a leader, whether you're leading yourself or your family um, or an organization is to remember the goals of what you're trying to do. And I think in this situation, it's going back to loving others. Yeah. And um, you can't love others without engaging. Yeah. That's right. yeah. So I think, and that's what this church is so good at doing, is engaging with people. And I think that's really, really important. Um, we're, gonna, we're gonna wrap it up here um, for our live stream, but I wanna ask one final question of each of you. Um, as hundreds if not thousands of people um, certainly around St. Louis and, and, and also around the nation are watching right now. Uh, maybe um, a friend of theirs shared the link or they are doing a watch party on Facebook or, or however they're, they're getting this or on YouTube. Um, what would be one if you could leave somebody with one piece of advice. Maybe somebody that you love. Don't tell, don't tell their name, don't put them out, don't broadcast them. But if there's, if there's a piece of advice or a piece of insight or wisdom in, in, in a couple sentences that you would share, um, would you just, uh, just speak that uh, to our congregation today, to who all is watching? Use wisdom and not worry. Uh, the Lord is with us. That's his promise to us in Joshua 1 and 9, and I would encourage you in that. He's, he's with us. Don't be afraid. Use wisdom, though. Um, the advice that I'm putting my medical hat on that we give is real, um, but don't worry because mm -hmm. he's with us. Yeah. I think it's interesting that we may be tempted to self-protect, and so I think it's God's job to protect us. And so let God do his job and uh, let us be uh, children and let us love one another and serve one another and look out for those who are in need and to don't lose sight of them, don't lose sight of God's word, but let them penetrate your heart for you'll find life and you will find uh, protection for your life. For me, it's lean not on our own understanding, right? Lean in on with, with God's word and getting back to the same message as loving other people and fully engaging uh, with others during a time that can be difficult. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, I don't know if you guys, I'm, I'm sure you are resonating with this at home. It is, this has been amazing uh, just for me. Uh, just for me as a leader who is seeking to lead through adversity and to find the opportunities in the midst of this uh, adversity. I just thank each of you for your willingness to be here.